part of me wonders why I think that there's intrinsic natures at all. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, th this may, so ontic structural realism is something that gets getting some attention. For, for my own take on this, I think that if you think about string theory enough, um, then structural, some kind of structuralism is kind of forced on you. It, you know, Richard Dawid has this really interesting paper uh, kind of echoing of some things that were inchoate in my ideas by saying it really nicely. He is very clear in his thinking, an extra expert on string theory. But there's something in string theory called dualities, um, which really are just an empirical way of confirming coins under determination um, uh, kinds of things that there are th theories which are very different in terms of their ontological uh, commitments, um, but which are uh, equivalent to each other. Um, uh, you can transform one into the other by a series of mathematics. And so I think one of the more famous ones, you know, there's T duality, S duality. So there's technical stuff in string theory, but there's a, um, the more famous result that's getting all the attention nowadays is the so-called holographic hypothesis, mm -hmm. which shows that, um, you know, under certain considerations of theory, which is in, you know, three dimensions, four dimensions like ours of space time with gravity is equivalent to a, a three dimensional or lower dimensional theory without gravity. Um, uh, you know, and there are different ways of fleshing that out. Of course, this is an anti sitter space, and that's very different from our actual universe. But in principle, people think, well, if, so so anyway. So those are kind of uh, bread and butter for string theory. These kinds of dualities that one one theory that looks very different is really the same in all of its empirical um, predictions and etc. But very different ontology. I think that's one thing that makes string theory very very different than any other theory of physics we've had is these dualities. And I think that one of the lessons of that is that um, ontology <laughs> is got to go. <laughs> um, so that uh, the, the idea that they're individuals um, is really called into question by this kind of duality thing. Um, so that some, what's preserved is a structure, some kind of some, something that's uh, not individuals. So, and of course, other people would appeal, appeal to quantum considerations, and I'm OK with that as well. I think string theory is a bit a bit more solid on this because it's just part of the nature of the theory. But anyway, uh, I, you know, I know you have things to say about um, structuralism, but I wonder if you would, you know, what is it that is wrong with this idea that there aren't any intrinsic natures at all? Mm. That's all really interesting. I'd, I'd love to, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to read more on what you just said, or I hadn't thought of that particular point. Um, and ju ju just, you just made me think, I mean, just connecting to the last point of the last discussion, but, uh, and you know, I think, um, you know, Rosalia monism hasn't been, it's getting more known in academic philosophy, but it's still completely unknown out, you know, in neuroscience and in physical science, in physics. And, you know, part of what I'm trying to do with popular book is, you know, to try and get the idea. Because you know, if, if it's going to be, you've got to fill in the details and it would be really cool to sort of just try and, you know, Think about neuroscience. Do neuroscience think about physics in the, in these terms? And and it sounds like a really cool challenge that I'll have to think about more. What that you've just raised. Um, although I'd, I'd want to distinguish between. I mean, there's different kinds of structuralism. One thing that you know James Ladyman focuses on individuals, um, but that's different to you know what, how I think of structuralism is more that there's just quantitative vocabulary which I define as just involving mathematical, logical, that would be the more extreme, just mathematical, logical. Slightly milder version is mathematical, logical, or causal, or gnomic, like law of nature or something, slightly. Um, so that's what I mean. By, so you could have forms of anti-structuralism in my sense that don't have individuals, and I guess some some Rossidian monists are sympathetic to that, you know, that some kind of, is a bundle theory in this sense, or I don't know, just the, the dropping individuals. Um, but in terms of, okay, so just coming to the, the, the crucial question, you know, why not be a, why not just think the structuralism? And I, th I think that there are two reasons. So, so, so one, I do buy these kind of a priori arguments, although they're kind of, it's really sort of notoriously hard to persuade people and it just sort of, Sometimes I change my mind on it, but I do buy these arguments that when you just have causal structure, you get in a kind of regress. So Russell uh, pressed this, my colleague Howard Robinson in the 80s pressed this, and um, you know I do try to press a version of that. So, so we could argue about that, but, but also I just want to say that you know, even if that ar argument doesn't work, 
So even if there are possible worlds where there is um, just causal structure, I'd say we still have a good reason to go for Rosidi Mosin because of accounting for consciousness. I'd still say you can't account for consciousness in those terms, which is exactly the argument that we've been having. Obviously, you disagree, but that's exactly the argument we have. So even if, even if you could say, even if I conceded that causal structure is coherent, I still want to say, fine, but it's not true in our world because there's consciousness. Um, but isn't it, it still would, you'd have to make conceivable that there could be consciousness in a world like that, or n now you'd want to say that's just not conceivable. I mean, I just don't see the incoherence of that view. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I tentatively conceded just from what I've been thinking this week about Shambi's that, yeah, yeah, so maybe, maybe what is conceivable is this kind of dual carving scenario where the purely quantitative properties are actually identical with qualitative properties, but in, in this really, in this way where there's just no intelligible connection. So I think that's, maybe that's in a sense conceivable, but I still think we've got good reason to think it's false, that kind of view. I mean, but this gets back to, I think, again, what you were saying we were talking about. So it sounds to me like what Revelation is doing for you is, is making it a datum that there's something with an intrinsic nature. Uh, that that's, that's part of the, what's got to be accounted for if you take consciousness seriously. I mean, I've heard you say this before in, in your talks and, and stuff that uh, um, the, the only thing that we know about matter is that part of it involves an intrinsic nature, um, namely the brain has conscious experience and that's, but, but I, I guess I just don't see that revelation gets you that. I mean, I don't want to rehash everything we already talked about, but so is that what you're, I mean, that's what's in the background of your thinking here is that there's gotta be something that has an intrinsic nature. I'd want to just, I'd want, I wouldn't want to load that into the, the, the pre, the data starting point. I want to, you know. I want to agree with you on that starting point that, yeah, you know, we both have these experiential concepts and, you know, we want to say that, or may, I don't know if you want to agree, but a lot of people, a lot of people can accept that these experiential concepts are satisfied, but maybe they, maybe they can be satisfied by purely quantitative facts or, um, so, so on that starting point, I want everyone, but, but I, but then I would want to argue that those, experiential concepts that we know are satisfied um, can't be accounted for in purely causal structural terms. And that's just, you know, the argument we've been having that it's, I don't think there's an a priori entailment. I think revelation is true. I think dual carving is false. All those elements have to come in. It's a very complicated argument. You know, so when I say, oh, you know, in a hand wavy way, qualities and quantities, that's just the starting point. All these elements need to come in but I think all those elements together get you that you you do you can't account for, for consciousness. So so can I try to reverse this in the other way um, quickly? So uh, suppose I mean I know string theory is very controversial, and the things that I was saying are even more controversial. Maybe although I think th th there are good arguments there, but uh, you know string theory empirically is not confirmed, and people there's the string wars going on, and blah blah blah. I think there are non empirical reasons for taking it seriously, or non uh, phenomenological reasons. But anyway, so I recognize that that's a whole hairy brain uh, can of worms. But let me ask you: so supposing that we had good reason for thinking that something like string theory was true of our world, um, yeah. like a lot of physicists uh, working on string theory at least think that. I, I think that. Um, so suppose we had good reason for thinking that, and suppose that the argument that if string theory were true, then some kind of some version of structuralism would be true. Um, then would you convert to illusionism? <laughs> would you would you then say, ah, well, then we don't really have consciousness in the way that we think that we do? I'm open to anything, you know. I'm I'm open to I, I'm, you know, I'm not a diehard. I'm. I'm open to be persuaded. That's an interesting argument. I'd have to. I suppose I'd want to hear a lot more about the move from. I mean, my, if I was, to, what I would generally, if if I was to think, what I'd like to see is can strict a Rossellian monist version of string theory be made to work. That's what I'd love. We had this conference in Budapest last year. Rossellian monist and time for the details, but it was mainly just philosophers talking, you know. But I'd like to see you know, Rossellian monist where it's genuinely, you know, can we make sense of string theory? And it's, I haven't thought of this before, the argument you're giving, but that actually it entails, 
if what you're saying is if that argument works, then it, the answer is no. Because, but I'd want to know: is this structures in the sense of there are no individuals, or or is it structures in the sense that it's purely quantitative causal structure? Um, I, I, I'm still not crystal clear, and I think I just probably need to read more on on the point. Yeah, you I'll made. share a link to the Dogwood paper, which I think is puts it really clearly in the strongest way. That I mean, so, um, so it's clear to me yet that that um, that it leads to the that string theory entails the kind of um, the kind of uh, structuralism that's inconsistent with Rossidian monism. But that's a very interesting argument that, you know, if that was to prove, I don't know, I'd probably be, I'd probably become an illusionist before I became any other kind of, I think Chalmers says that as well. I think, I, I, you know, before. but 